Hi, this is Martial Horror, and I'm here to welcome you to the first episode of Martial Horror's Pit of Hell. Or was it Portal of Hell? Oh well, I just kind of go with whatever title sounds best at the time. Pocket of Hell. Sewer of Hell. Prison of Hell. Cat Box of Hell. You know, why don't I just call it Cat Box of Hell? In many ways, that would be much more fitting. Anyway, the whole gimmick of the show is if I were to go to hell, what movies would Satan make me watch? Besides Twilight. And to get things going, I decide I have to pick the absolute worst movie that nobody really knows or cares about. Okay, they are a shock. Wait, what? Mario Bava can't do a bad movie. He's given us such genre classics like Black Sunday, Black Sabbath, and Kill Baby Kill. Okay, all great movies that nobody knows about. Even though you should. But while Bob has certainly did have a few missteps in his career, none really surprised me like Shock did. After all, it is his last film. Way to go out on a positive note, Baba. How did you screw this one up? Oh, well that explains a lot. Even though I have absolutely no basis to, I'm just gonna go ahead and blame Lamberto Baba because he's not as cool as his dad, Mario Baba. <laughs> Now brace yourself, because what I'm about to show you is the most terrifying thing ever shown on screen. Nothing I will ever show you can match this, and nothing but Bava could ever do could match this. I'm scared thinking about it. Are you ready? Here we go. Marco, that's my name. Bah! Sound off the annoying kid alert. Is it gone? Marco. Ah! Seriously, what is with kids in Italian horror films? Always evil, unlikable, unbelievable, annoying, and annoying. I mean, you have Macabre and Shock, you have House by the Cemetery, City of the Living Dead, Manhattan Baby, and Sweet House of Horrors. You know, those last four films were Lucio Fulci movies. He must really hate kids. Oh, and how can I forget Burial Ground? Especially Burial Ground. <laughs> The story follows a mother, her son, and her new husband as they move into a new home. Apparently the home is perfect, except that it does have a history. Dun! You see, she used to live there with her ex-husband. He tragically died when he took his boat out and apparently committed suicide. Gee, I wonder if that's how it really went down. Following that, the mother had a nervous breakdown. Gee, I wonder what that's going to lead to. Oh god, it's burial ground all over again, isn't it? Uh, but at least they got a real kid this time. I'm looking at you, Michael! Actually, wait, that's even creepier. What would have been like directing that scene? Alright, kid. Now, when you fall on top of your mother, I want you to make sure you dry hump her real good. And make sure you get that look of sexual frustration on your face, young man. I'm <laughs> just going to get that image out of my mind and move on. So Michael starts getting creepier. Oh, God, why do they even bring this up? They never even go anywhere with it. So the house is obviously possessed. The kid is horny, the mom is going crazy, and the stepdad naturally doesn't believe her. It's easy for you to be on the Gee, outside. I've never seen that in every other haunted house or any supernatural movie that's ever been made. I more serious than they are. I mean, I know this is how people would probably act, but it's just getting boring to watch, and because this is a boring movie already, I don't want even more boringness. Oh, by the way, the supernatural presence in the film is actually a more of a metaphor for mental illness. Because if your movie is unoriginal and unconvincing, you might as well just make it pretentious. People will eat that up. One thing that really did bug me was how weak some of these special effects were. I mean, Bob has always had to deal with low budgets, but before he was able to give us Planet of the Vampires and Danger Diabolic, and even if they weren't always convincing, they were always very aesthetically pleasing. But here they just feel tacky and dated. They don't feel right at all. In fact, you just kind of want to laugh at them. <gasps> <laughs> ah! 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 
Now, anybody familiar with Baba's films will know that they were always very style over substance. We were all right with that because he did that very well. But unfortunately, he seems to have forgotten about that here. Shock is very, very bland to look at. And when the style does occasionally seep through, it's very uncomfortable and it just doesn't benefit anything. If anything, I actually thought the style sort of took away from it. But luckily, we don't have to worry about that much because we just get a look at more blandness. Joy. But because Marco apparently wasn't annoying enough for you, Mommy gets to scream and boy is her scream ugly. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it, please! Stop it! Okay, so since I'm sure other people hate this movie as much as I do, let's go ahead and read some of their comments. Maybe they can explain the crap I just watched in better words than I can. Here are a few quotes from the International Movie Database. The whole film left me with a very creepy feeling, and for that I feel that the film worked completely. What? Mario Bava's Shock, 1977, is an exceptional film. It's not only suspenseful and stylish, but its impact on the later Italian horror movies is clearly visible. Okay, I could see some of the impact, but... Stylish and suspenseful? Did we see the same film? While Shock is not as memorable as most other films by this brilliant director, finally somebody agrees, it is definitely a creepy, genuinely scary, and downright great film that Italian horror fans cannot afford to miss. People actually like this? Why? I mean, unless you're into incestual children, banshee mothers, and predictable plot twists, I don't see the appeal. But it has been alleged that Lamberto Bava actually did most of the directing, and I'm willing to believe it, because blaming Lamberto solves all my problems, thank you very much. Personally, I think people force themselves to like this. After all, it is Mario Bava's last movie, and nobody likes to say his last one sucked. But, as you all know, I'm always right. So you're wrong. Okay, is there anything good about it? <laughs> Again! Yeah! I can get used to this. One more for the road. Unfortunately, after this, Mario Bava retired and then died. I personally blame Shock. So I'm going to do two things to make me feel better. The first is watch his true for last movie, Rabid Dogs. What's the other thing you may ask? Well... This has been a review by Marsha Horror. My motto is if you're going to have cinematic diarrhea, then at least have the decency to wipe. Stay tuned for next time.